Heights have been under Israeli claims since the 60, 67 war, where they uh, where they took the Golan Heights. It's the high country, right. and and they will probably not give it back. That's just yep. the way that's going to be. So we see some of these. The prophetic landscape, in my opinion, uh, is is changing mm -hmm. and looking more like these ancient prophecies are about to be fulfilled. Yep. Another analogy would be the stage is set. The players are there. Um, the key players are already on stage, and it's just a question for the mm -hmm. for the thing to begin. And I yeah. think that's it's going to be sooner than later. Okay, Lynn, in, in, the, in the first hour, you were uh, you started off talking about the crystal skulls. It, isn't there isn't there some sort of prophecy, or uh, maybe it's a book? I don't know. <laughs> I guess some, sometimes we're getting them confused now between somebody's writing and actual prophecy. But right. wasn't there something to the effect of uh, a, there a certain amount of crystal skulls? And and didn't somebody say that if, if when the last one is discovered, that is sort of an end of time? scenario have you got anything on that any research on well that? again that's that's some some bizarre uh story which has been circulated on the net and i've read that uh and and as with all these crystal skull things and and again i mean it's you know look, I, i'm one guy i i know so much i've read so much and that's it I, i'm not exhaustive and i don't know everything and don't claim to but what i do know about the crystal skulls it's seemingly that these things came came to light towards the end of the 20th century um, and uh, before that, uh, no one knew where they came from, and, and they, people, some people anyway, believe that these things are forgeries, yeah. and that they were that they were but, just but, crafted, yeah. you know, well, and, I mean, and put up. But who knows? Well, isn't it, isn't it true though that it would take some major technology to create a crystal skull? Absolutely. Sort of like um, the pyramids. That it seems like they would have to have some sort of technology to cut a stone six sides with one fifth of an inch variance. Wouldn't you think that some machine was involved with that? Well, I, I would also, um, yes, I, I believe in that the ancient technology that built the pyramids, specifically Baalbek, and I tie this back into the Nephilim, uh, the whole idea of the, the Nephilim, which I talk about at great length, by the way, in Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural. There's a whole chapter on that. Mm -hmm. I believe that the Nephilim built Baalbek. Why? Because the three largest stones ever hewn by anybody on this planet are set. They're called the Trilithon, and they're set in this temple, and there's no way that these guys uh, used, you know, rams and sweaty slaves. I mean, it's just, it's just nonsense. It's just total nonsense. But here's the deal, and I'm not making this up. We know Goliath could have been as tall as between 9 and 12 feet tall, all right? Right. That's pretty big, especially if it's, if it's the latter number. If it's 12 feet tall, that's, that's big, all right? Okay. What if Og, OG, who's alluded to, he could have been between 15 and 17 feet tall, and he's one of the last of the Nephilim. Get my point? Yeah. And this is the second incursion. This is well after the flood. This is after, you know, thousands of years after the flood happened. Yeah. The flood happens, I believe, the Trilithon and Baalbek was built by Nephilim. And I believe these guys could have been 20 to 30 feet tall. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, picking up rocks, whole different deal, isn't it? <laughs> whole different deal. Yeah, picking them up with their claws. Hey, uh, got this question from the Fast Blast for you, Lynn. Uh, do you believe there are a there are aliens in our underground bases? Absolutely. Absolutely. But I don't believe that they're aliens. I believe that they're demonic entities, mm -hmm. luciferic entities right. that are here. Okay. Uh, that That's a whole, you know, it's, it's, it's a kind of a convoluted answer. Okay. The, the whole idea of the grays, what the grays really are, that they're yeah. biological suits that these demonic spirits inhabit. That's why they all look very clone-like and very similar. Uh, it ties into yeah. Whitley Strieber's book where he's on board, allegedly on board a craft, and he opens his drawer, and there are these, like, suits, which <laughs> look like suits but are, are bodies kind of thing, but there's nothing in them. We yeah. know that demons have to have something yeah, to inhabit in order to manifest in this time-space continuum, in our three-dimensional time-space continuum. They need something... To, to enter into, whether it's a herd of pigs or a man or whatever. They need something to manifest. And so I believe that the grays mm -hmm. are a biological suit, which is constructed so these demons can manifest. And I realize that's really bizarre stuff, but just stop and think for a second. We, we can clone. You know, we can mm -hmm. manipulate the gene pool now. Well, that's, the, you know, we've only discovered DNA since Watson and Crick in the 50s. What about this Luciferian guy mm -hmm. who's been around for, you know, who knows how many yeah. thousands or even tens yeah. of thousands of years? Yeah. He's like a super every, scientist. Yeah. I don't and like that's it. why I think it might work. Yeah. Uh, we have this question. Uh, do you think that every possession is a demon or, this is from the live chat, uh, is every possession from possession of a human demonic or could it be possible that other humans could possess somebody 
Well, another human being has a spirit, and the only the only way a person can can really be possessed is to have a is to first of all he has to have a willing door open to have that demonic entity enter him. Uh, another human being, his consciousness. Now, if you're a shaman or if you're dabbling in the occult, there are certain occult ceremonies in which. Uh, you can kind of project yourself into a person, but your spirit can't go into another person. I don't believe that can happen. You can't be possessed, let's say, by the spirit of Aleister Crowley. You can be possessed by a demon calling himself mm -hmm. the spirit of Aleister Crowley, but it's not Aleister Crowley. Get what I mean? Yep. Gotcha. All right, we have this question from the Fast Blast. Uh, Lynn, do you have any knowledge of the incoming of Planet X, and is that Wormwood? Could be Wormwood. Um, what I know about it is what kind of everybody else knows about it. It's seemingly like the thing is out there. Um, it seems to be real. It's it's on a really weird orbit. And it, could it be Wormwood? Don't know. It it, it may fulfill that uh, prophecy. Just have to watch and wait. Don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, do do you think there's any technology that we currently have, such as I know uh, the mad scientists at IBM, they have over a billion transistors. On a, on a dot type of thing going on now. Is, is any of that alien technology, or is that all human ingenuity? ingenuity? Well, Corso's book comes out with the, uh, those of you who have read it, The Day After Roswell, where apparently he received all this high-tech high information and um, top-secret information and was able to distribute it throughout uh, uh, the industrial complex in the United States. The problem with some of that is, is you, you can trace where the laser came from, so it's not... Mm -hmm. It's not an alien, you know, yeah. pen light deal. The guys who invented the laser, I mean, you can go back and, I mean, they spent lots of money and lots of time inventing a thing. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, who knows? I mean, who knows what, what's what been gleaned from, from, let's say, the 1948 Roswell crash and other crash disks. Mm -hmm. Don't know. Mm -hmm. But it's certainly plausible that they can, they can back-engineer mm -hmm. some of the mm -hmm. stuff and maybe some of the stuff is being used. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say. Um, do you consider yourself uh, somebody who walks in the supernatural? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, but we need to define what the supernatural is. I don't. I don't believe in the occult. Well, I, I do believe in the occult, but that's not what I walk in. I, I'm a follower of Yeshua, and I believe in the uh, in the indwelling of the Comforter that He talked about indwelling the believer. I believe in that Comforter um, who can teach me in all things. That doesn't mean I know everything, and it doesn't mean I'm all wise. But uh, I can. I I do walk in that. Um, I've been involved, let's say, in um, and exorcisms, not a lot, but a few, and I've seen things manifest from the uh, from the person who was uh, being exercised, let's say, right. uh, not too pleasant to be around, very difficult, something I would certainly not sign up for. <laughs> and then I've seen uh, I've seen the miraculous happen. I've okay. seen people, um, and I've been involved in some of that, where I've seen ma healings literally manifest themselves mm -hmm. right in front of your eyes. So. I've seen both, and it's, uh, what do you it's think, amazing. What do you think about this uh, Todd Bentley stuff going on? Um, again, watch and wait, watch and look. Mm -hmm. Don't I would I wouldn't jump into that, but I'd sit back and watch and see what happens. Uh, I, I will say this: I have some flags on the play, and I won't go on the record, but I'll, I will say that much. I have. There's some flags on the play. I, I like, I like the good of good pros. The flag on the play. You're not making. There's something that needs to be reviewed. Is what you're saying there, huh? I think um, a group of people really should check out some of the claims, okay. and I think it's. Um, well, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get one of these places where they got some gold dust because I, I, you know, I like to, to me. To see that, that's just, to me. I mean, it's just it's nonsense. The gold dust is just nonsense. Okay. Any look, I was involved with a guru yeah. for like three years before I became a follower of the way. I, I was involved very heavily in the occult, and I saw a lot of stuff manifest. Okay. And that stuff just doesn't do it for me. Oh. Gold dust or jewels or any stuff, it just doesn't do it for me. Oh, I mean, that can all be counterfeit signs. That Hang on now. I'm not, I'm not going to let you slip, slip, I'm not <laughs> gonna let you slip through on this one. What, are you a member of the way? Well, when I say the way, I don't, I don't believe in the, or, that, that particular organization called the way, no. Okay.